Hello everyone. On Sunday, there was a bar-citizen event in Hong Kong for 430 Hong Kong dollars, which is around 50 euros US dollars. There were some interesting people from CIG there. Todd Peppy, Star Citizen Life Director, well known. Tyler Wittgen, Director of Community. John Crew, Vehicle Director, well known. Aaron Roberts, of course. And two other gentlemen. Sorry, I don't know exactly what you are doing. Ian Leyland, Art Director, and Elliot Chen, SVP Marketing. Of course, I was not there. I don't know who answered what questions. On Star Citizen Base, there's a thread started by Chimera, and he showed us what questions were asked and what CIG answered. I find this very interesting. A link to this is in my first pinned comment below. I won't read everything. I will only concentrate on things I find very interesting. Thank you very much, Chimera, for providing this. Squadron 42 being removed from the store is not an indicator of anything remotely imminent regarding Squadron 42 releasing. There wasn't a denial of anything Squadron 42 coming out, like previews or some kind of early access slash vertical slice, but it was clear that they're not expecting it to come out this year. I think, besides a very few people, most of us didn't think that Squadron 42 was about to be finished just because it was removed from CRG's store. I surely didn't think so. SIG is really excited to see how Starfield performs and they don't see any real issue with competition. I would say exactly the same thing if I would work for CIG. Obviously, one game, Star Citizen, is an MMO. The other game, Starfield, is a single-player game. Still, there's a lot of overlap. Hull C coming out will give them a lot of good information on how bigger ships will impact the server performance in the game. But there is a low likelihood of any big ships coming out after 3.2 this year. The good old, let's put X into the game, collect data so we can analyze this. Well, CRG is collecting a lot of data over the years, but it doesn't seem to do a lot with it. There was a statement made in passing about wishing to see something big like the Pioneer coming out this year. And the comment was made you really should come to CitizenCon this year, I think you'd be happy. I don't think Pioneer will get released in the next 3 to 4 years, so most likely Another big ship will get revealed this year's CitizenCon. Get your wallets ready! AI crew slash blades for simple tasks like mining slash salvage will not likely be in game until there is more stability otherwise the higher server loads will end up negating their ability to do basic tasks, i.e. when all the AI on a server just freezes in place. As expected, a lot of things rely on some key mechanics blockers. This was foreseeable. Why didn't CRG start to work on key basics like PS and server meshing way earlier? Why is Tubulent an external company responsible for this very important task? Why not in-house? Salvage mechanics for breaking bigger pieces into smaller pieces are still being thought up and haven't been pushed past concept ideas. Okay, this is funny or really, really sad. Remember, according to Chris, 2016 CitizenCon talk, and he called it a roadmap, salvage, full salvage, not just high scraping, was supposed to come in 3.2 in summer 2017. Uh, the next one up would be 3.2 with repair and salvage. So we'll be able to salvage and repair. And now, in 2023, CRG is still at the stage of concept ideas for full salvage. Is this for real? When base building comes into the game, it will be something more akin to Fallout 4's prefab house system, not something where you can create a base building panel by panel. Base building is very important to SIG because they want to have people creating bases and whatnot, but it won't be coming out until likely around Nix. Around Nix means in 3 to 4 years at the earliest, and just prefabs is really boring. Who used prefabs in Fallout 4 base building? I built tons of bases in Fallout 4, I never used prefabs. Yeah. Different systems, when they come out, will have different themes and SIG will expect that the way that each system looks and acts will reflect both the theme of the system as well as when it was created. The expectation is that Stanton will feel old and safe compared to the harsh and dangerous Pyro while Nyx will be more off-grid homesteader themed, which implies heavily that base building will be seen when Nyx comes out. 
So far, Pyro looks like another Stanton chest without any lore. Let me guess, all planets will have one G and are clones of Earth atmosphere-wise, like all planets we have so far. Why not have planets with different gravity, with different atmospheres? Why no lava planet? Pyro was supposed to have a lava planet according to CHE's law video. And Pyro was supposed to be something very special. It was supposed to have a red dwarf star bathing the system in red light. But this is gone too. Now it's just another G-type star. When asked about why they don't release specific systems and allow people to navigate either by a menu or a loading screen, the response was simply that's not how we want to do it. We want to get the server meshing thing figured out so we can start rolling in new systems. When follow-up asked about how many systems the response was well, we want to have Pyro and Nixon as soon as possible, but we haven't built too much of other systems yet. We are in year 11. So far, CIG has made 600 million dollars. Take your time. One fine day, we will have 100 star systems, for sure. Theaters of War assets aren't coming into Arena Commander and Theaters of War is being worked on, but not with a large team. Oh yes, three and a half years ago, John Tracy said, I want to get it into the hands of the backers first half 2020. We are very much on track for this, we are not behind at all. And now three and a half years later, it's still not in the game. And this doesn't look like it will be in the game in the next two or three years. Overall, reading this feels once again like a small indie dev team with three or four people in year one who want to make a space game and are just brainstorming. I don't get any vibes of a $600 million dollar project in year 11 with more than 860 employees by now. Of course, CHE didn't start with this, but CHE has more than 400 people since 2016. It feels like Star Citizen is not even at the halfway mark in year 11. Chris seems to think he has all the time in the world. I hope for him he is right. To me it looks nothing is coordinated, there is no planning, no structure, no supervision. What I say is not addressed towards the devs, QA people, artists or coders, you are doing a fine job. But the people on top have no idea how to manage such a very ambitious and huge project. Chris is only interested in eye candy, fluff and time sinks and then he is happy. Let me know what you think in the comments below and see you next time. Bye, auf Wiedersehen. Fire when ready, Flicker. Okay, I thought so. I didn't take damage. I didn't take any damage at all and Buggy is destroyed. Okay, Flicker, fire when ready. Yeah, it's very exposed. Offline. I didn't take any damage. Hey, you're still here. You might want to join me on Twitter. My Twitter account is Kamoral underscore SC.